In today's video, I wanna talk about cold water bass fishing. I've done a lot of cold water bass fishing in ponds. I have done a lot of cold water bass fishing in bigger lakes. And really there are three main things, three tips that I think if you apply them to the body of water that you are fishing, you can really simplify things and can help you to just go out there and catch more bass in cold water, no matter how cold it is. You know, up in the northern part of the country, this is gonna be just before and after you have ice. Maybe down in the south, you don't get ice, but you do get water temps that get fairly low, maybe in the upper 40s, somewhere in the 50s. These are tips that you can use to go out there and catch more bass when you're fishing the coldest water that you will see. Now, real quick, before we get into those tips, I want you to to know that this video is brought to you by Clemens Boats. They are the marina that I work with. And if you guys are interested in a, an icon boat or a bass cat boat, maybe you're just interested in a new bass boat, we're gonna be having a demo day on May 4th. I'm actually going to be there. And if you guys are interested in a new bass boat, I would love to take you out on one. I think it's gonna be a really, really cool event. And I will leave some more information when we get closer to that day and we know more about it. All right, let's talk about cold water bass fishing. And like I said, growing up, I actually did a lot of cold water bass fishing in a pond. I was fortunate enough to have a pond in my backyard and I would fish up until the, the pond fruit froze. And now I fish primarily from a boat. And I, like, like I did back in the day, I still try to fish up until everything freezes. I'm also one of the first ones out on the water once that ice comes off. I just love to fish in cold water. And the big thing about cold water is you really, this is kind of a mindset thing. You have to realize that you're not gonna go out there and absolutely crush the bass. I've never had a ton of number days out there on the water where I just catch the fire out of bass. Now, I have had days though where I go out there and I catch a few and they are great big ones. And when it comes to catching those big ones, again, there are three main things that I do. There are three main tips that I wanna talk about. Now, the first thing that you should know is you wanna be close to deeper water. This is very, very important. And I, I'm not saying that you're going to be fishing in deeper water. I'm saying you want close, you want deep water close by. And here's the thing, in the middle of winter, in some of the coldest water that you will see, bass aren't always in deep water, but they almost always have deep water close by. You, you might be fishing a, a lay down log that's only in two or three foot of water, but the end of that lay down, it drops into 10 or 12 or 13 foot of water. Bass like to have a close drop just like that all the time in cold water. Now, deep is also relative to the body of water that you're fishing. In the ponds that I used to fish growing up, deep would be seven or eight feet of water. You know, where I could find seven or eight feet of water really close to the bank, that was typically the best little zone for me to go out and catch bass. And the thing is, is that bass don't like to travel far in the winter to get to where they feel comfortable. If you have a big cold front come through, a bass isn't going to be 100 yards up on a two foot flat where they gotta travel 100 yards to get to deeper water. They just wanna slide on down. They wanna slide on a little bit deeper. So having deeper water close by to what you're fishing, whether that's a brush pile, a rock pile, maybe some grass, whatever it may be, is extremely important. It's one of the most important things that you can do is simply have that deep water close by. Now, let's talk about number two. Now that we kind of know an area that bass might like to be, I wanna talk about your lure. And one of the most important things when it comes to fishing a lure during the middle of winter is fishing something that is subtle subtle. You want something that does not have a tremendous amount of commotion, action. You don't want a overly aggressive bait because you got to remember we're fishing cold water here. So that means that a lot of things in nature that are all cold blooded are just moving a little bit slower. Sure, they might kind of fly, you know, you might find a crawdad in fairly cold water that might scoot away kind of fast from a bass, but for the most part, things are just moving slower in cold water. And if you have a bait that has a tremendous amount of action, something that really thumps really hard, you know, a wide wobbling crankbait, uh, those things are just unattractive to a bass. It's just too much for them. It's not natural 
to them. And so having something that is subtle, and this can be a number of things, you know, a, a net rig, obviously a shaky head, worms like that that don't have any flappers on them, those are subtle baits. You can fish a bait like a Kitex style bait, but a lot of times during this time of the year, I like to go with those skinnier, kind of the shiner style Kitex baits, the ones that don't have a big wide wobble to them, something that is a little bit tighter. That is what you want when it comes to a crankbait. This is why I love baits like a DT6, you know, that's made out of balsa. It doesn't have a ton of rattles in it. It doesn't have a huge wide wobble to it. It's a tighter, more subtle action. So subtle, just remember that when you're going to pick out a lure, subtle, you want something subtle. It is extremely important and I'm gonna drive this home because I've already said subtle like 100 times. All right, let's talk about the third big thing um, when it comes to cold cold water bass fishing. And this is all about, to me, is scent. I really think that scent is even that much more important in cold water. And the reason being is that in, in cold water, you have bass that are very negative. They are, they're, they're a little bit more lethargic. They're not actively eating often. So when you bring a bait by them, that maybe looks good to them, but again, it's it's maybe not like, it's not the action of them seeing it. What what it's doing is not very attractive to them. It's not enough to get them to, to, to provoke them to bite. Sorry, I'm struggling talking right now. I think having scent on your baits is really important to being just another positive cue that can help you to get that that bass to bite. You think a lot about the old school, the old timers out there who used to love to fish a jig and pig during the middle of winter with what? An old pork frog. Something that's just loaded with scent that's giving out a ton of scent. I think that the reason that that was so effective a lot of times in that colder water is simply because it's, it's just one more positive cue that a bass needs. And sometimes out there, you know, you say for example, if you have two baits and they are the exact same, except for one has scent on it and the other doesn't, if you bring that bait by 50 bass over the course of a day, we'll say we, you bring each bait by 50 bass, I think the one that has zero scent on it might get five of those fish, maybe four of those fish to trigger and to eat that bait. But I think just having some scent on your bait, you might get six, seven, eight of those bass to be triggered. So again, it's a percentage game. It's all a percentage game. And you may think, well, Tyler, it's maybe one extra bass. Well, that bass may be a 10 pounder. You never know. And in the winter is a great time to catch a big one. So those are the three big things that I think are really important in cold water. If you guys like this video, maybe you'll like my most recent video. I'm gonna leave it right here. Also, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys tomorrow.